Hey guys, uh, I want to go ahead and start talking about uh, operations with complex numbers. You guys might have done these before, just want to kind of refresh. But um, complex numbers, uh, we call them imaginary numbers. Uh, the reason being is because uh, it stems from square roots or radicals. We know how to take the square root of 4. Well, it's plus or minus 2. But you're taught in algebra 1 that you can't really take, you can't take the square root of a negative. So the square root of negative 4, well, what does that become? We call it undefined. Uh, in Algebra 2, you learn it's called imaginary. The reason is because you can actually separate it into negative 1 times positive 4. Mathematicians had a problem with this idea of, of taking the square root of a negative. So they developed this concept of imaginary numbers. And it's imaginary represented by the letter I. And it represents the square root of negative 1. So the square root of negative 4 actually has uh, the value of the square root of 4 which is plus or minus 2 but then because of the square root of the negative 1 you have the i so you have this relationship here where the i is equal to the square root of negative 1 now if we square both sides we end up with this relationship where i squared is equal to negative 1 and this is what we use a lot your professors are going to be expecting you guys to know uh, when you do these when you ever see an i squared you can just replace it by a negative 1 so let's go ahead and do a few of these. Um, now the first few are just arithmetic multiplication, very simple. Now you notice there's a plus in between, so that means you're going to add this value with this value. Now the other thing about imaginaries or complex numbers, you always want to write the real value, the real number here, and then followed by the imaginary portion. All right. So this is the real part, and this is the imaginary. So when your professor uh, you know, write these, he's always going to write them as such. So, you know, just kind of like combining like terms, negative 3 plus 2, well, that's negative 1. 4i and then negative 3i, so that's 4i, take away 3i, well, 4 minus 3, that's positive 1. And that's your answer. Here it is. That's it. Okay, the thing you got to be careful, though, is you, whenever you have this negative, you have to make sure you distribute. I have a lot of students that get confused and they forget to do that. So if you want, you can rewrite it, but I can kind of figure it out here. 3, the, the real part goes with the real number here. So 3 minus 4, well, that's negative 1. Now notice here, we are combining like terms, okay? That means we're adding. So radical 3 with radical 3, we can add those together. What are we going to add? Well, we're going to add this part in the front, okay? Because they're radicals, they have the same radical. Okay. Uh, remember, if you have, for example, radical 3 plus radical 2, you can't add that. Okay. You, you just have to leave it like that. All right. But in this case, radical 3, radical 3, they're the same. Uh, they have the same radicand, so we can add negative 4i. Okay. Now, this is a minus in the front. Negative 4i minus 7i. That should give you negative 11i radical 3. Remember, we're adding. We're not multiplying. We're not doing any of that stuff. Just like I did here, 4i and 7i, or negative 4i and negative 7i. Okay, that's negative 11i, just like we did here in the top. 4i minus 3i. All right? Remember, this is just addition, subtraction. That's it. We're not multiplying anything out. And that would be your solution. I know that one looks kind of weird with the radical inside. As we move along, now you have something like this. Now this is, remember, multiplication. So remember, it's basically it's telling you it's 4 minus i times another 4 minus i. So you can call it the box method. You can call it FOIL. But you're going to be multiplying this guy out. So 4 times 4, that gives you 16. 4 times negative i, that's negative 4i negative i times 4, negative 4i. Now this is where the i squared comes in handy. Negative i times negative i. So negative times negative, that's a positive. i times i is i squared. Okay, so now what does this become here? Remember, you're combining like terms. So that becomes 16 minus 8i. And now what's the i squared? That becomes the negative 1. Because remember, i squared is represented by negative 1 right here. 
Now I can combine that even further. 16 take away 1. Well, that's going to give me 15 minus 8i. And this would be your solution. That would be your answer. Okay. Let's keep it going a little bit more complex. Now remember, this is multiplication. So I am doing the FOIL method. Okay. The first, the outer, the inner, and the last. So 2 times 2, I'm sorry, 2 times 4 is 8. Now let's remember we're multiplying here, right? So 2 times this guy here. Okay, now this is the real part. Okay. We're gonna be multiplying it right here with the full with the with the negative two. So two times negative two, that will give you negative four i radical three. Okay. And then here on the bottom, i radical three times four. What are that's gonna give you? Well, four positive four i radical three. And then here, i times i, well, that's going to give you negative 2i squared. And then because we have radicals, the radicals on the inside go together. So 3 times 3, that's going to be square root of 9. Okay? So notice how I did that. i times i, that's i squared. And the 2, and you can think about it, the 1 here, 1 times 2. And then square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that's the square root of 9. All right. Uh, simpli simplifying it further, these guys go together. And you notice they're exactly the same. Square root of 3, square root of 3, I can combine them. So negative 4i plus 4i, that cancels out. I am left with 8 minus, well, what's i squared? Remember, that's negative 1. And what's the square root of 9? Well, that's positive 3. All right, so this guy actually becomes 8 plus 2 times 3. Now be careful, don't go doing 8 plus 2. Remember, it's 2 times 3 first, and that uh, becomes 8 plus 6, which is 14. So uh, kind of a tricky problem, isn't it? All right, all right, let's keep going. Um, number 5, this guy. Now, the thing about uh, dividing these complex numbers is you cannot have uh, imaginary or complex numbers in the denominator. Well, how do we get rid of this guy? Well, if you remember, in order to get rid of it, we have to multiply by the what we call the conjugate. Now, the conjugate is the exact same numbers here, 1, 3i. The only thing is, I want them, instead of a positive, you want to multiply, you want to have a negative okay because this becomes now kind of like a difference of squares and what happens is um, the i and the i square is going to simplify out and the middle is going to simplify out as well here all right so remember whatever you do on the denominator you do on the numerator okay so let's multiply this guy out here and i'll go ahead and do it the long way so one plus three i times 1 minus 3i. So let's go ahead and do it the long way. All right. So we know that 1 times 1, of course, is 1. 1 times negative 3i, well, negative 3i. 3i times 1, well, that becomes a positive 3i. And that's what I wanted. See, positive and negative, these guys are going to cancel out. Because remember, we cannot have an imaginary number in the denominator. We gotta simplify it out. So these guys have to cancel out somehow. And the only way to do that is you need a positive and a negative of the same exact value. And then, so we have one times one, one times negative three i, three i times positive one, and now you have three i times negative three i. So positive times negative, negative three times three, nine i times i, i squared. So now you have this relationship. Now this guy, well those guys cancel out, so we're left with 1 minus 9. And then remember, what is i squared? Well, i squared is negative 1. So this guy becomes 1 plus 9, which is 10. So all of this, all that we did, 
the denominator ends up being just a 10. And that's what I want. It makes it easier to, to simplify. Now, what do I do on the top? Well, I have to go ahead and do the FOIL method again. All right, so let me see if I can do that real quickly. Um, I guess I can go ahead and do it here. So 2 minus 3i times 1 minus 3i. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing. So 2 times 1, oh, that's 2. 2 times negative 3i, negative 6i. Negative 3i times 1, negative 3i. Negative 3i times negative 3i, well, negative times negative is a positive. 3 times 3 is 9. i times i is i squared. So now we have that. So we can go ahead and simplify that. So that becomes 2, negative 6i minus 3i, negative 9i, and then plus, what is i squared? Well, i squared is negative 1, and then that becomes 2 minus 9i minus 9. So 2 minus 9, you can simplify it further, that becomes negative 7 minus 9i. So what does that become? I'm going to go ahead and do it in red. So this becomes my numerator over here. So that becomes negative 7 minus 9i. And that's all she wrote. That's all you can do. But if you notice, we simplified it. No more imaginary on the denominator. We use, we call this, uh, when we multiply with the opposite, we call it the complex conjugate. Okay. And uh, this is simplified. All right. So let's go ahead and see if we can do one more. And I want to go ahead and do uh, kind of like an algebra problem. If you notice when they ask us to solve this, uh, they tell us, okay, well, solve it. Normally we try to factor it, but in this case, you notice if we can try to we can try to factor it, but it won't work. So we have to use a quadratic formula. So I want us to use a quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, so remember, this is your a, that's your b, that's your c. Remember, you're only using the coefficients. You're not using the, the variables. So when you go ahead and do that, negative b, you have, be careful, this is a double negative. So negative 3 plus or minus. b squared, well, let's go ahead and write it out. Negative 3 squared. The value of a, that's a 1. There's an, there's an invisible 1 you can see there. And then 4. Okay, divided by 2 times a, the value of a is 1. All right, so let's go ahead and do some math real quick, mental math. That becomes a 3. So now you have 9 minus 16 divided by 2. And this is where we use our complex numbers. 9 minus 16, well, that becomes negative 7. So you can have x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 divided by 2. Now your professors at the college level, they're not gonna, they're, well, they will not allow you to leave it like this. You have to go ahead and simplify it further. So you can go ahead and write 3 plus or minus uh, i, because it's the negative 1 inside, square root of 7 divided by and this is what I wanted to get to from this negative square root to this guy right here. Okay, and this would be your solution. All right, guys. Uh, uh, sorry if I went kind of fast. I tried to do as many problems as I could. Hopefully that helps. And uh, we'll see you next time.